Proxies act as intermediaries between you and the internet by forwarding your request through their IP address. Proxies can source their IP from three different places and are called different things. Data center proxies, residential proxies, and mobile proxies. In this video, I'll break down why they're different, their pros and cons, and their typical use cases. By the end, you'll have a clearer picture of which proxy is right for you. Let's start with data center proxies, which get their IP addresses from data centers. They're often the most affordable and can quickly handle large-scale tasks like web scraping, as long as the websites you're targeting don't have strict detection methods. All right, let's talk about their pros and cons. First, the pros. These proxies offer high speed and low latency. They're easily scalable because of their large IP pools. They're generally more affordable compared to other types of proxies, and you can get access to a wide range of global locations since many data centers are spread worldwide. The IPs provided are often static, and lastly, they're known for reliable connections and effective load balancing. Now on to the cons. They're easier to detect and block since their IPs are flagged as commercial. They're less ideal for geosensitive tasks as some data centers are concentrated in specific regions. Shared IPs can also sometimes suffer from what's called cross-contamination, where one user's activity affects another. And they're not the best choice for tasks that require a high level of IP authenticity. So in short, data center proxies are great if you need speed, volume, and affordability, and if the websites you're visiting are fairly lenient when it comes to IP checks. But if you're dealing with tougher anti-bot systems or tasks requiring a home-based IP, data center proxies might fall short. Next up, residential proxies. These proxies source their IPs from internet service providers, meaning they come from actual homes. Because websites see them as normal household connections, they offer a much higher trust factor than data center proxies. Let's take a look at what that means for you, a proxy user, in terms of pros and cons. Starting with the pros, they're viewed by websites as regular home users, making them less suspicious. They're less likely to be flagged or blocked, which is a huge advantage. They're perfect for tasks that require high authenticity or precise geo-targeting. Plus, they offer a large global IP pool sourced from real households around the world. And now on to the cons. They are more expensive, especially as you scale up usage. Many providers sell them on a per gigabyte basis, which can add up quickly. Some providers might not be fully transparent about where their IPs come from, and if you're using shared residential IPs, they might already be flagged on certain sites. To summarize, residential proxies are a strong choice for any activity that needs you to live up to a website's expectation of a regular person surfing the web from their home. This can be anything from web scraping on sites with stricter rules or automating social media interactions. They are pricier, so be mindful if you need a large amount of bandwidth or a huge pool of proxies. And finally, mobile proxies, often referred to as 4G or 5G proxies. These get their IPs from mobile carriers, so websites see you as if you're connecting via mobile data on a phone or tablet. Thanks to mobile network infrastructure, these IPs rotate frequently and are harder for websites to block. Now, let's go over their pros and cons. First, the pros. They're highly trusted since websites are reluctant to ban mobile IPs that share carrier networks through CGNAT. With dynamic IPs and frequent rotation, they're harder to detect. They're perfect for advanced scraping, web automation, and managing social media accounts on strict platforms. And they give you access to mobile-only content and apps, which is a unique but big advantage. And now for the cons. They're the most expensive proxy type, largely due to the cost of SIM cards and mobile data. Their performance can vary depending on signal strength and network quality. And while 5G is expanding, coverage is still limited in many regions. Mobile proxies are your go-to choice when authenticity is critical and you can't afford to be flagged. They come with a high price tag, but for sensitive or high stakes tasks, they're worth considering. So now that we know all of that, how do we actually put this information to use? Choosing the right proxy type isn't just about speed or price. Every project has its own unique needs. Things like how the website handles bots, what exactly you're trying to do on that site, how quickly you need it done, and of course your budget all play a role in figuring out the best fit. Let's break down a few key factors to consider when making that decision. First, we'll cover price. For data center proxies, they are the most affordable option because there's just so many of them. By paying per gigabyte, you get access to many, many proxies around the world. They're great for anyone who needs high volume without spending a lot. Residential proxies are more expensive, since the IPs need to be sourced from real households. Because they're more expensive, the usual per gigabyte model can get pricey if you're going through a lot of data. 
and mobile proxies are generally the most expensive option, mainly because of the cost of SIM cards, data plans, and hardware investment. They're usually billed per gigabyte or through monthly plans, but you can also make your own. So if you're working on a tight budget or need to run bulk tasks, data center proxies will likely stretch your dollar the furthest. Residential and mobile proxies deliver high trust, but do come at a premium. Now let's talk about risk of detection and blocking, including how proxies handle rate limiting and IP blocks. Data center proxies are the easiest to detect and block because data center IP ranges are publicly known. Websites can look up the IP and know that they're coming from data centers. Using a data center proxy means you'll be hit with more captures and trigger more anti-bot measures, depending on the website, of course. Residential proxies match a website's expectations of a normal user, which means you can get away with more before triggering anti-bot measures. You're less likely to be detected using a residential proxy unless your IP was previously blacklisted or if you're being a bit too ambitious with the volume or frequency of your requests, which can trigger anti-bot measures. Mobile proxies have the highest authenticity in themselves thanks to dynamic IPs and CGNAT, where a single mobile IP can represent many real users. They're the hardest to block outright because banning one mobile IP can disrupt access for multiple legitimate users. So, in terms of detection, for tasks with minimal anti-bot measures, data center proxies are often sufficient. But if you have your eye on sites with stricter bot policies like e-commerce platforms, residential proxies or mobile proxies can help you automate without interruption. Let's talk about speed and scalability for each proxy type. Data center proxies run on enterprise grade servers with high bandwidth connections, so they're usually the fastest option. They're also the easiest to scale with thousands of IPs readily available. Residential proxy speed depend on home ISP connections. It's typically reliable, but not as fast as data center proxies. Scaling comes with an immediate direct cost, since it's tied to per gigabyte pricing, which can add up. Mobile proxies can offer good speeds, especially on 4G or 5G, but performance varies depending on signal strength and local network quality. Scaling up can get expensive quickly, as it often means adding more SIM cards or increasing data allowances. So if you need to scale up quick or transmit large amounts of data, data center proxies shine. Meanwhile, residential and mobile proxies can get the job done reliably, just be mindful that higher speeds often translate to higher costs. Now let's talk about geolocation for each proxy type. Data center proxies are available worldwide, but precise city level targeting isn't likely. Data centers are usually concentrated in specific places. Think Silicon Valley. The US has the most data centers, pretty much half of the world's total. So other countries won't have nearly as many, which might be limiting your choices. Residential proxies offer more granular geolocation, since real homes are spread across almost every area. They're great for localized tasks like scraping region-specific e-commerce sites. For mobile proxies, coverage depends on carrier networks. If your region has strong 4G or 5G infrastructure, they are reliable, but they're less flexible compared to the worldwide availability of residential IPs. So, for those who need city-level targeting, residential and mobile proxies can give you that flexibility. Data center proxies are available almost everywhere, but might not be available in the exact city you need. We've been using the words authenticity and trust throughout this video. Now let's talk about what that means. Simply put, the closer you match a website's expectation of a normal person using the internet in a normal way, the less likely your activity will be flagged. The further you deviate from that norm, the more likely you are to see things like CAPTCHAs, rate limiting, and IP bans. The source of your IP is only one factor in that calculation, but an important one. Take data center proxies for example. Looking up a data center IP will tell you that it's a commercial connection, which makes most websites put up their guard. You'll be able to get away with less because you're already being scrutinized. Residential proxies have a higher trust factor for the reasons we've discussed throughout this video. The thing is, websites already know that most proxy users will prefer using residential proxy. If you're using a residential IP that's been flagged before, the site's guard will also be up as well. And finally, we have mobile proxies. Most people don't go through the hassle of buying SIM cards to put into their phones and dongles. The barrier to entry is higher than that of residential proxies, which gives them a greater level of authenticity. And on top of that, because of CGNAT, multiple regular mobile data users can be sharing the same public IP, meaning a website can't ban you without risking banning a legitimate user. In short, websites view each type of proxy with varying degrees of trust, which allows you, a proxy user, to get away with more before tripping up the site's anti-bot measures. 
So there you have it. Data center proxies for affordability and speed, residential proxies for real home trust, and mobile proxies for next level anonymity. Each type has its own unique pros, cons, and cost structures, but ultimately the right proxy for you comes down to your project scale, your budget, how seriously you need to avoid detection, and how much authenticity the target site demands. If you still aren't sure which proxy best meets your needs or you need more in-depth guidance, check out our additional resources and links in the description below. If you want to learn more, on how to make your own mobile proxies, check out this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more tips on efficient, secure, and cost-effective proxy use. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.